Spring after spring, year after year, a young girl watched and listened. This is the story of how a life of observation and bravery changed the course of environmental science and continues to inspire the young naturalists of today. Roaring Book Press is proud to present Spring After Spring, how Rachel Carson inspired the environmental movement. In nature, nothing exists alone. Rachel Carson. Spring After Spring is written by Stephanie Roth Sinsom. Cheerily, it was dawn when the chorus began. Rachel didn't want to miss a note. As the midday sun warmed the earth, other musicians chimed in. Life and music were all around, and wonders big and small. Spring was Rachel's favorite time of year. As the sun set, she could hear the first bubbles of frog song. Crickets began their nighttime tune, and bats squeaked a lullaby. At home, there was a warm supper and a big family. Mom played the piano, and Dad sang songs and read stories. Rachel's favorites were those about the sea. As the days grew longer and warmer, the chattering, chirping, and hooting got louder. Until the gathering calls from migrating birds meant that it was autumn. They were coming together for their long journey through the ocean of air to their wintering homes. But not everyone left. Snuggled under a warm blanket, Rachel drew pictures and wrote about the life she experienced all year. She read books about animals and imagined what their lives were like. Spring after spring, year after year, the birds arrived. Every season, Rachel watched, listened, and wrote. And like the nestlings, she grew quickly. Then one autumn, it was time for her to go off to college. She was sure she wanted to be a writer until she looked through a microscope and saw a world in a drop of water tiny sea plants and animals. Rachel was amazed and in love. She wanted to know more about the very small world made visible by a microscope. She had never been to the ocean and was scared to go into the water. To learn about the creatures in tidal pools, marshes, and the sea, Rachel decided that she would study biology she put her writing aside. After she finished school, Rachel worked as a scientist and compiled information about the ocean. Now, for her job, she wanted to know what it was like to actually be underwater. She was still scared, but she went anyway. In the fish world, many things are told by sound waves. Rachel began to write books about the sea. They were so full of scientific detail and vivid descriptions of the lives of sea creatures that people could imagine those worlds. Rachel became a famous author. But there was something wrong. All around, nature's voices were going quiet. So Rachel did what she did best. She watched closely, listened carefully, and learned as much as she could about what was happening. Rachel put together scattered facts and found the answer. People wanted to kill bugs that ate their plants, bothered them, and sometimes even made them sick. Chemists created new poisons to solve the insect problems that seemed to work 
and seem to be harmless to the other creatures and humans. These poisonous chemicals were quickly used everywhere in huge amounts because people thought they were safe. But Rachel found evidence that the poisons were not safe. 1. Poison eaten by microscopic water life. 2. Water life eaten by tiny fish. 3. Tiny fish eaten by bigger fish. 4. Bigger fish eaten by eagle. 5. Eagle egg shells are so thin that they break during incubation. Another cycle for the poison. 1. Poison coats worm. 2. Worm eaten by bird. 3. Bird eats many worms coated in poison. 4. Bird dies. Rachel wrote a book to tell people what she had learned. Silent Spring created a huge ruckus. Some people were inspired to change, but many didn't believe Rachel. Eventually, President Kennedy took notice and began an investigation to find out what was true. Rachel was asked to come to Washington, D.C. and defend her book. She was scared, but she went. Rachel's testimony in Washington and her writing in Silent Spring made people see that they have an effect on the environment and the other creatures that they share the world with. People were inspired to speak up. Congress passed new laws so that nature was treated with much more care and some of the most harmful chemicals were banned. Spring after spring, year after year, people celebrated the earth and the environment because Rachel showed them how beautiful and precious it was. But Rachel went home and continued watching and listening. In the morning she went out among the tide pools and gathered specimens. In the afternoon she carefully studied them and took notes on her observations. And in the evening when the tide had gone out again she returned each creature with great care exactly in the spot where she had found it, exactly where it belonged. As human beings, we are a part of the whole stream of life, Rachel Carson. Even though Rachel Carson gave a voice to nature and brought an awareness to people about our connection to this fragile planet, pesticides and herbicides are still being used all over the world today. Just look at the bees and the impact pesticides has had on that.